Kansas, the sunflower state, the land of Oz. Donovan Hill, buddy. <laughs> we did it, man. The camper stand. We did it. Angles you, you don't really know just how big a deer he is. Oh, oh, buddy. That's a good deer. Oh, my gosh. Almost the same thing we had last year with Freak Daddy. Unreal. What a buck. Double lung. I'm telling you, buddy. Triple H outfitters. <laughs> Lord, thank you. This... Just take my head and that's, that's unbelievable. That is one heck of a deer, guys. Oh, baby. <laughs> we just shot a giant. That is such a cool buck. And Donovan, Charlie, and Hilly, they ain't nobody works any harder for these guys. I feel happy Dude. for it. We did it. <laughs> Let's head to Triple H Outfitters. There's no place like it. This hunt actually starts with preparation. Back in the summer, hanging the covert trail cameras, getting the big time feed out, trying to take inventory. We've got several a little honey holes. Donovan and I have been putting out this big time and we getting everything situated with the covert cameras. It's gonna, it's gonna be an unbelievable year here in Kansas. And this year with Triple H Outfitters, they gave me some new pieces of property. Hey, it's gonna be off the charts because this year I've got the covert Blackhawks that's gonna be sending them to my phone. And let me just say, my phone was burning off the hook. I had three cameras out at three particular spots. One picture every 15 seconds, I was getting over 10,000 pictures, and mainly of bucks. Just unbelievable how they just congregate to the big time feed. It's the most incredible feed product that I've ever seen. Corn rotator cup. <laughs> what else could <laughs> we'll eat up with this stuff, you guys? I don't know why, but I'll eat up with it. Get things loaded up and get that other set done. Unbelievable amounts of shooter bucks, not on just one piece of property, on all of them. I even went back in early season, thought maybe I could knock a big one out at one of the places. Well, the good news is we had two studs in here last night, but I'll tell you right now, he is an absolute giant. Definitely will close over boom. We got another buck that I nicknamed Lefty. His left side is more palmated. I can't tell you how many different shooter bucks that we had on that particular property. When you got three days to hunt, 
this is what you gotta do. But I'm here once again at Triple H Outfitters. Tomorrow night will probably be my last time to hunt Kansas for a while, as I'm headed to Montana. Now you're trying to figure out the pieces of the puzzle. Getting the muddy blinds and the muddy tree stands out, figuring out what particular pieces of property to hunt on a particular wind. Another buck that was a real tight rack, so we call him pronghorn, big old heavy deer. And he was showing up on the covert trail cameras. I'm elsewhere. And by the time we got there, he was just kind of hit and miss. The bucks are already starting to get with the does. I knew that. And I'm thinking, I just gotta catch a break in between these old mature bucks. They're, they're gonna be, they're gonna be with the doe. November the 11th and started the hunt. Now this is a place, what I call a pool area. I'm gonna have to rattle, grunt, wheeze, let them get up there to see the decoy because otherwise they're probably not gonna come to the property. How awesome was that, buddy? We just get in here. That's what I love about Kansas. Triple H Outfitters, it don't get no better. Our first morning here. But that big time feed, along with the covert trail cameras, told us that we had lots of inventory that was traveling through this piece of property. Hey y'all, good morning right here from the land of Oz, Kansas. There's two big bucks on the hit list. Perfect is a huge 10 point. We get in on a piece of property where this giant buck was that we nicknamed Perfect, and there's some more bucks on the property that's big in the area. But there's another big buck showed up, big body deer. He's tall and heavy. It looked like really good brow tines, and I'm a brow tine nut. This is one of the most perfect decoy spots you could ever ask for. I rattle this gorgeous buck that I name Socks because he's got four little white stocking feet. Oh, look at him, he's got an attitude. Here he comes all bristled up, he sees the decoy. Could have shot him at about 20, 25 yards. But this deer has unbelievable potential. I just hope that this buck gets by and we get to see what he grows into next year. He needs, he needs another year anyway, maybe two. But God, he's, he's, he's golly, these deer here got great genetics. This other piece of property, it's about 50 acres there, and there's an alfalfa field there and train tracks that you have to go over to get back in there. We had this other buck that showed up that was just a giant. On one side, he had seven points counting the little kicker and then four on the other side. We call him the seven four buck. As it got in there closer to the rut, he just kind of came in and took over this spot. Colton and I took this muddy blind and we, we went out there and picked all this old CRP grass and picked it up, went in there and Hey, it looked like a <laughs> hay bale blind when we got done with it. And just take a look at all the covert trail camera pictures and the video footage of these bucks walking through there in the daylight right in front of the blind. You just gotta be there and have patience. It's all in the good Lord's hands. He's got the plan. We're just waiting for the opportunity. Let's do this, buddy. Back over to the, the pool area spot there. 
Every time I rattled and grunted, it seemed like there would be a different buck show up. It's gonna be right at the edge of the cedars. It's gonna pop out right here. That's a shooter, I believe. I believe it's a shooter. There it comes up right there, right there. We call him the 410 buck. Man, he come up there and I'm just gonna tell you, when he's ground level coming up through there, I was wanting to put an arrow in him, but I got to looking and realized this is a young deer. He gets a free pass. Grunt rattling and wheezing. This right here, though, was the closer, no question. This dual grunt call, the stretch back. What was crazy is all the amount of deer that we had, even the does were coming in and they were coming in downwind. And that was another piece of the puzzle I felt like that we did very well this year. Scent control starts before you ever hit the woods. Obviously with the lethal products, shower and laundry, then spraying down. This is the Enforcer Ozone. I use this here in my truck. We just had it running. Back of the truck in my boat cases. I've got like three of these things but the Enforcer Ozone. It was my own little personal ozone generator, putting it in, in the truck, the boat cases. Hey, even in our bedroom and stuff where we were staying at night. And I think that's why we had so many encounters. And a lot of times the wind would shift, especially right there at last light or first light, it wouldn't be exactly what the weather was forecasted. So, hey, that's what we did. It's a beautiful morning here. November the 16th here in Kansas. Sprayed down good or lethal this morning. Cause I feel like we're gonna have some activity. And it's one of those still mornings that you can hear a pin drop. I hit the antlers. And that buck walks over 800 yards all the way to the decoy and walks up there. He's looking. He's looking, buddy. He's looking. Call him Shooter because every time he comes in, he almost gives me a heart attack thinking there's a Shooter buck. Because when he's coming straight in, and that wide rack's out there, it's like, oh. Then you realize, you see the body size and you see the time length that he needs to grow a little bit more. That's tough. I'm hoping that he made it through gun season. Holy smokes, is he gonna be something. He needs one more. I, yeah, I know you hear it all the time. And I'm just gonna be honest, if he'd have got up and really got aggressive on the decoy, I may have knocked his lungs loose. It's just something about rattling and grunting and wheezing one in. The adrenaline level goes up times 10. Well, here it is, midday. I just got a covert cell cam picture of 7-4 buck. And sure enough, he was standing right there in front of the camera, which is about 20, 25 yards from my homemade modified muddy. Colton and I are going in after the 7-4 buck. I mean, when it's time and the rut's happening, you've got to be out there.
as crippled as I am. Hi. Give me a hug, bro. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, congrats, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, He's an old dude. devil. That's Papa That's awesome, Bear. Eh? Cool. He's the real. reason these Good boys deer. have Triple H outfits. Oh, Tilly, congratulations, buddy. That's an awesome buck. The 17th, 18th, and 19th of November in Kansas is three of the best days you could possibly hunt. November 18th, buddy, six different bucks chasing that doe. But it looked to me like at least two to three possible shooters in that bunch. I don't know how to say this. I just knew something was going to happen. I mean, bucks are traveling, they're cruising. It just felt like you just knew it was gonna be one of those mornings. And I saw this big giant buck going through down there. He's about 300, 350 yards away. Yeah, that's a big, oh God, that's the one we want right there. Big 10 point, big. And I mean, I look and he's running, but he's down below us. And that's on the property we can't hunt. So I'm trying to bring him up there to see the decoy. I took my antlers, clack, clack, clack. I grabbed the dual grunt, stretch back, everything you can to get their attention. God, it's a giant. I think it's that big man. I'm not sure he's big. We get him in there, buddy. He's, he's big. It was on in our way. He may have seen that other deer thinking that was a doe. I don't know. We had sat there about five, 10 minutes, nothing. I'm thinking, goodness gracious, he's just not gonna show. But I told Colton, I said, I'm gonna hit it one more time. So I'm clank, 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 and there he comes. I mean, boom, he's on us. It's hectic, and I can see he's coming, and he's coming hard. Oh, big boy. We have seen him on your side. And I'm just fixing to release the arrow, just like this. Well, the buck takes another couple steps, and when he does, I stop him. Man. Dude. Arrested. He's there. He goes. He's going across the field. He's fine. Gosh darn. Had him. Had him. That was the deer we was after. Had on the trail cam. The big ten. I blew it. 18th November. I said it time and time again. I had him right there, buddy. I blew it. I had that deer dead to rights, 25 yards. You live for that moment. You live for that moment. That was the buck we were wanting to shoot to. I just took my focus off the pins to make sure I wasn't gonna hit the fiberglass rod. And it cost me another buck of a lifetime. Checking the covert trail cameras, this buck had showed up back in October and I didn't know it. And we nicknamed this buck big time. I'm just heartbroken. I hope I live another day to shoot at a big old sad day like that and miss another buck. Clean as a whistle. Game hide. <laughs> I'd have froze to death if I didn't have my game hide on. Game hide, it gets no better. Now with the seven four buck. We were running late to get to the blind. And as we're going across there up on the railroad tracks, I look, I said, Col Colton, stop. And it's the seven four buck. He's going down the edge 
and I hadn't seen the doe yet, but right in front of him, he was following the doe. Where are they headed? Like they always do, and cut and walk right in front of the dadgum blind. Yep, I got the culverts there set up, and yes, they capture the action. He's following that doe right in. Had we been 10 minutes earlier, 10 minutes, <laughs> We'd have been in there because everything was already set up. All we had to do is hit record. My luck is just, I knew it. I knew he was gonna be here tonight. I had it. We tried to hurry and we flew to get back here. And there you go. But you know what? That's hunting. And when you're doing what we're doing, there's a lot involved besides just hunting that we have to take care of before we ever get into the field. I, I can remember that just, I, I was sick. It's a windy November 21st. November the 26th, it's Sunday. November the 27th. And it's only like 75 degrees. The last day of November. I don't know that I've ever went through a November that I didn't shoot a buck, but this may be a first. <laughs> it was unbelievable how the rattle and the grunting and the wheezing was working, the decoys. We're getting in the month of December here, and gun season's open in Kansas. And we're sitting there, and I believe it's December 2nd. Golly, amazing, amazing season here in Kansas. Had lots and lots of encounters, and we've been beating our nose like crazy. That morning we get in there, and sure enough, two bucks coming. Oh, better get the camera now. The eight point was leading the pack in the Big Ten, which I had not seen this deer up close and personal in this area, period. I hit that dual stretch back. When I did, I hit it. Well, the eight point saw it and he started reacting to it. The big buck, I'm pretty sure he heard it because I could tell with his attitude, he's coming through there as Colton's filming him. He's looking for one of those licking branches that I could tell, I told Colton, I said to that buck, if we can get him, we gotta get the decoy out because I did not set the decoy out th that morning. Well, the Big Ten, he just takes his time and walks on. But I, I knew in the back of my mind that he is gonna play the game if I can get Smitty set out there. So that afternoon, what do we do? I get Smitty set up, and lo and behold, there's Big Time. That's, that's him. That's him, buddy. And he's coming up through there, and I'm just, I'm gonna get a second chance at this big giant. Well, he gets up there by the big round bales, and I'm looking at him, I said, oh, man, I think that's big time, I'm sure. And then, all of a sudden, I lose sight of him. We're all thinking he's gonna show up, me and Colton. We're sitting there, and we're sitting on second, buddy. And I've got that elite. And we sit there, and we sit there, and sit there, nothing. To this day, I do not know what that buck done. I don't know. All I know is the next thing, for the next 20 minutes, we have deer were just coming through and we got a full moon setting up there. Then here comes old Shooter up through there. He's coming straight toward Smitty. All of a sudden, I look and here comes Nancy. All these other deer, the bucks, the does are all locked on Dempsey. Let's see what he does. Let's see what he And he comes in, he gets downwind, and he gets up there, and he's bowed up, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, look how much bigger he is than Smitty. And Smitty's not a small decoy. The pin's there. I know it's 25, 27 yards. I put that pin in there. Smoke, buddy. Smoked him, didn't we? I think I heard shot him. Johnny, buddy, watch him. They own him, 
tail on it now. I think we put it right in there, didn't we? <laughs> Lord, thank you, Jesus. Let me get this off. I'll never forget the aero flight, watching that knockout lighted knock with that victory vap TKO and talk about a knockout punch on old sad daddy Dempsey. I wanted Big Buck with attitude and we spoke to him. I know that I had my heart set on big time, but when a buck does that right there, that's what trips my trigger. And buddy, she looked like it was on the money. Lord, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Hey, we saw that buck this morning and we said right then he comes in. And look at the body size of that rascal. That's a big four-year-old anyway. That's why I come to Triple H Outfitters right there. That decoy right there, Smitty, being sent free, all the factors that we do came together at one time. Oh. That's a raptor trick. I want to show you this. I'll bet you anything we got heart. Look at that. Oh my God, y'all, he didn't even go out of sight. We told him he didn't even go out of sight. Dempsey didn't go probably 30 yards. Y'all, here he is, here in Kansas. Dorothy clicked her heels tonight, buddy. It's gun season, as everybody knows right now. And that's why I've got this Hunter Orange on, but I can still hunt with my bow. And, and this is a hunt that I'll never forget because I've had more deer on me, more encounters on the decoy, I can't be more thankful. I'm here at Triple H Outfitters with Donovan, and Charlie, and Hilly, and the gang, and I'm 100% here, y'all. I've been hunting with them for 10 plus years on the turkey, and I think this makes number six, and it feels really good to be able to redeem myself. I feel blessed. And last but not least, I wanna give my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all the glory for this hunt, because without him, I wouldn't be able to do this. I know that. This hunt truly touched me, and I believe it's one of the best hunts that I've ever been able to show you all through the lens of the camera. Colton and I, this is none of this recreated. This is exactly the way it happened, this hunt. And I'm truly thankful to Triple H Outfitters, Donovan, Charlie, Hilly. This is why I love this, man. It is the most gratifying feeling that you can ever feel when you put all the pieces of the puzzle together and it works out in your favor at the end. This hunt is dedicated to my good buddy, TJ Unger. And buddy, this one's for you and the whole Virtue crew. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you in the blind. Blind day with Sad Daddy. We're gonna be lethal this morning.